I see you now. Hi, Sarika. Hi, Mal. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Thank you so much for accepting to talk to me today. It's quite an honor. It's a thrill. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Slavika. Um, How's everything over there? It's uh, it's amazing. I'm living a dream life, and uh, okay. it's a beautiful dream. So I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying every minute of it. How are you doing? You must be thrilled. So your book is out. You're doing signings now. Uh, I'm I'm thrilled for you. I follow you on Facebook all the time, oh, thank you. news and everything. So um, my intention for this video as for all the videos I'm going to create, is to inspire and empower as many people as possible to live their dream life, to know that it's possible, to give them tools, to give them ways to, even if it's just to inspire them so that it, it switches that light in, in many people so that they go, oh, okay, I can, I can do it or I can have a better life. Okay. And so to start, I'm going to ask everybody so i'm asking you as well to introduce yourself for those that maybe don't know you yet um how would you who would you say you are as an introduction well my name is Vami Gavrish jr i am an author i wrote a book called the five levels of attachment and my main job is actually to be a father and a husband i'm a family man that's a full-time gig and then, but uh, I've been working on my book for a while, and I just finished writing a second book, uh, Living Life of Awareness, which is a collection of meditations. And it's exciting, you know, it's, uh, I get to continue on a beautiful tradition that is called an oral tradition, which is, uh, <clears throat> you can say that's one of the things my, my beautiful family has uh, been able to offer for many generations. My father does it, my grandmother, my great-grandfather, my great-grandfather before. We all shared our tradition via this oral tradition, which we share not only lessons of life lessons, but information and knowledge that is, you can say, shared through the generations in our own unique way, as unique as the individuals who teach it. So you can say that is part of who I am in a sense of what I do with my work and how I share uh, in a personal note, I'm just Miguel. Excellent. And tell me, uh, I'm personally curious and I'm sure many others are curious, how was it to, to grow up in, uh, in a family, in the Ruiz family, uh, with that tradition and the, the, all the I guess you, you've been taught the, the Toltec way since you were children, or yeah, it was it was fun and like like my father and my grandma before we all rebelled against it, you know. It's, it's, really? <laughs> well, yeah, we, we do. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you think about it when you're young, like when you go to school and you read your history book, but you read your history book and you think to yourself, what does that have to do with me? And when you see it from that point of view as a young person, it, it kind of is this thing that um, you're told what it is, but at the same time, you, you can't, it's hard to tell when you're living it because one, we're, we live in this modern world, we're engaged with our friends and families. You can say that I grew up in a juxtaposition between my grandmother's faith healing and my father and my uncles, uh, med doctors, met the medical world. My father is uh, a surgeon, my uncle is a neurosurgeon, my other uncle is an oncologist, and my grandmother was a faith healer. <laughs> so you, you grow up with these two worlds, these two different ways of seeing the world. One that is based on spirituality, the other one is based in science, and you grow up with these two worlds. And you can say that who I am is a result of these two worlds. How I, I, how I understand spirituality, how I understand uh, the, the modern world comes from two generations that love one another. You know, the, my grandmother's generation with my grandpa and my uncles and my aunts, their generation. And combine them together, you have a whole, a beautiful world where you're free to choose how to live life. So when I was young, 
both worlds were something that you were forced to learn. And as magical as it was, as beautiful as it was, the essence of the lessons of growing up in a Toltec family is living life. The love that we share for one another, the love we have for one another, which I believe a lot of families live through that. The, the thing about growing up with that as well is that even with my apprenticeship, when I started my apprenticeship with my grandmother and my father at the age of 14, my father had already tried to uh, pay me to go to his classes and that eventually didn't work. You know, he'd pay me $5 when I was 12 <laughs> to go to his classes. And one of the things my father realized is that I'm going to have to go through domestication. I'm going to have to face the dream of the planet. I'm going to face all the obstacles because it's my life. It's the reality we live in. And to grow up sheltered from that is going to be a disservice, a complete and total disservice. So he stopped paying me and I started engaging the family. I started playing it. And then I started practicing the traditions and then the beautiful thing about that is that as I grew up, grew up, when I graduated from college, when the bubble of the family burst and you become your own person, your own man, your own woman, you also realize that the world is different and you engage it and it begins to teach you life is the real teacher. What my father what my grandmother, what my teachers at school all gave me these instruments that are applicable once life teaches us. Because up to that point, it's just theory. It's just something that, you know, you, you can do a ceremony, you can go to a class, and all the stuff you learn is theory. It's something that my imagination can comprehend but I have to go into my imagination because that's the only way I can understand it. But when life comes in and steps into you and says, here, here it is, here's your choice, you can go in any direction, then all these instruments, all these things we learn become practical and we start applying it. An example, in 1997, the book, The Four Agreements comes out. I pick up the book, I read it, halfway through I close it and put it down. <laughs> it's my dad telling me what to do all over again. And it, it, it's helped so many people, but at the time, the filter of the son reading the father's work, to me I understood it in a totally different way. So after graduating from college and living life, I picked it up back again in 2002. I read it and I'm like, oh, I understand it. I get it. <laughs> and not because, not because it's a, a theory all over again, but I can see it in my life. I can see it reflected in how it, it functions in my life. And apparently I'm not the only Ruiz brother to do it. My brother Leo just told us that he's only read the Four Agreements. He hasn't read any of the other books. <laughs> None. Amazing. But because he has the same concept of us, is that we grew up with this, and he's young, much younger than me. He's twenty-eight, so he's just now starting to read it. But that's the thing. That's the beautiful thing that even if you grew up in the family of teachers, it means nothing until you put it into practice in life. That's amazing. So that to, to me, that's that's. That was what it's like to grow up in that family. You know, it's, it's growing, it's growing up like in any other family. You know, we all we all see these beautiful traditions. We all see this wonderful work, which is called the Four Agreements, and I can also see it how I could distort it into the four conditions, and I can use it to domesticate myself with them. Concepts that I would didn't know uh, when I was young, but now I can understand it. Like, oh, I see. I, if, I, if I judge myself for taking it personal, that's a sign that I use it as conditions, not agreements. I've used it to domesticate myself that in order for me to be perfect, I have to take things, not take things personal, not make assumptions, always be impeccable with the word. 
Um, and do your uh, best. Oh, do your <laughs> best. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm Tommy Gallery's cheaper. How can I call myself that if I don't know who for a queen? We create, we create an image of what we're supposed to be. And with the domestication, yeah. that image of perfection through the eyes of the judges, it, if you get it right, if you live up to the expectation, your reward is love. Conditional though it may be, it's love because we are emotional beings. It feels like that. That's the reward, acceptance. Yeah. You did it right. But if you fall short of that image and you fall short, like not knowing what, uh, always doing your best, that one agreement, oh no, then I'm not worthy to call myself Domingo Ruiz Jr. I'm not worthy to call myself a Toltec. And the diatribe of self-judgment comes in and whack. Yeah. This is an example of how we distort any form of information, especially that of, of spiritual work, like the Four Agreements or Deepak Chopra's work or Wayne Dyer or the Bible or the Quran or, the, or Buddha or Krishna or being a vegan or anything else. We, we, are used to, we are used to domestication yeah. because that's the only way we've known and we distort it. So when I read the Four Agreements the first time, I'm, I've domesticated myself to looking up and living up to this expectation and looking myself through conditional love. This is what turns for the Four Agreements into the Four Conditions. The Four Conditions for your personal freedom. If you don't live up to them, then you're you're doomed. But well, no, no, you're not doomed. You're just simply constant. You're simply consequence of conditional love. You're, you're not. You're not feeling it like you're enough. And actually, the, tr the maybe the the reality is to feel like you're enough, just as 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 is, and just being enough through the process of improvement. Well, that's the thing. It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's even the word improvement. And you can e and you can even hear it right there. The catch of domestication, right there. I have to be something I am not. Why? Because right now, who I am is not worthy. Because I'm not this image of what I'm supposed to be. How, how do we use the four agreements then? How, if, if 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 it's if not like with that model. Because we're used to that model. We're used to saying, as soon as I, as soon as I accomplish this, as soon as I have this, as soon as I'm able to do this pose in yoga, as soon as I'm able to like, be completely vegan or, or vegetarian, I can do this or do that, or I can call myself... Well, that's the thing. The mind, the domestication, the, the, the domesticated mind will always grab that information and distort it. So how do we stop it? Well, accepting who we, for ourselves, or who we are at this very moment. I am alive. The past doesn't exist. It only exists in my mind. And for as much as I want to go to the past, I can't change my mind. Because intent no longer exists there. The future doesn't exist yet. It's the consequence of the actions I take now. So it means the only real truth is this present moment. And at this very moment, this is who I am. I do take things personal. I do make assumptions. I... Sometimes I'm not impeccable with my word, and sometimes I don't do my best. Just ask my wife. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because in accepting who we are at this very moment, the world, the world changed. The world to improve is, has a totally different meaning. Because I love myself for who I am at this moment. I accept myself. So change comes because I want to, not because I have to. And now you can say the difference between the four agreements and the four conditions. When I want to, I can shift, but I don't have to do it because I really love myself. So my motivator to do it is not my own acceptance. In fact, I change because I love myself. I'll adapt to life. I'll adapt to the circumstances. I mean, if I want to, I love myself. So, if I want to stop taking things personal, for example, I accept the truth. I take things personal. All right. I love myself and I take things personal. But I don't want to do it anymore. I, this is the thing. In agreement is simply a word that 
captures an, an action, which is the action of me saying yes. That's what an agreement is. I say yes. Thus, we have an agreement. So, in understanding that concept that I say yes when I want to, so this particular agreement, don't take things personal, is me actively saying yes to that. Because when I say yes, and even when I say no, this is how I manifest intent. For every yes I give, something will happen. I'll move, I'll shift. I'll be able to move my arms in this way. If I say no, my arms won't do anything because I will not use this energy to do that. So this yes and no is how I control intent, or at least this energy that animates this body. Me, the real me, the authentic self without a definition. I have a question. When you say, and I love what you say, the, the, you know, the ability to, to actually do things because we come from a place of utter personal love that is unconditional self-love where one accepts oneself totally at this moment, totally for who they are and then moves forward because of the wanting of moving forward or the not wanting of moving forward, but in total acceptance. I meet a lot of people that are unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, there's no judgment there, but that are um, at a place where they're so far from understanding, feeling good enough already, or uh, being able to even uh, say out loud that they don't feel that self, self-love. So they are in the, in the, totally what you were saying in the beginning, they are in the process of saying, well, once I have this, I'll be happy. Once I become this, mm -hmm. then I'll be myself. Once I prove this, then mm -hmm. I'll be someone. Mm -hmm. and, and like I use a lot of humor for myself. I laugh a lot about myself because I, I love myself. But a lot of people are, are frightened of what others may think think of them because they have so little of that self-love and I would mm -hmm. I would appreciate if you could give them an advice of where to start if they would like to improve that self-love to to accept themselves totally where to start for them Perfect. Great, great, great great question we were, uh, that's where we're leaving going back to what agreement makes is the actual me saying yes something imagine that every belief you have in your belief system, at the root of it, there's a yes. Every belief you have, we have, in our belief system, in our mind, is there because we said yes to it. We agree with it. It, it, it means something to us because we give it that agreement. There's nothing in our mind that we said no to because we're not giving it energy. You see, I am not this body. The reason why I'm able to say that is because when I pass away, when I leave this body, this body, this corpse becomes an object, just like this, inanimate. No intent anymore existing in the form of Miguel. If you can understand this concept, then you can also understand this next one. I am also not this mind. My mind exists because I am giving life to this mind and this body. So, if we can understand this concept and how we shape the brain and, and shape our mind with the experiences of, of our life, the memories that we hold on to, the, the ideas and the agreements and the beliefs, they shape who we are because we still agree with it and, or believe in it. And those thoughts that mean nothing to us are the thoughts that, poof, disappear. So, when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we see our reflection, we can either see ourselves just the way we are or we can say, I'm going fat. Look, I'm going fat. I'm losing my hair. Oh, no. I'm got a belly. I'm brown. And whatever, all of a sudden, we're judging ourselves. We're punishing ourselves. What we're hearing in our mind or in our expression 
are the agreements we've made of what is to be beautiful. If we go back to the idea of perfection through the eyes of the judge, if I live up to every expectation that I am worthy of my love and I've got nothing but praise, conditional though it may be, but if I say the beautiful image of me, Miguel Ruiz Jr., is to weigh 180 pounds, which I'm not sure how much that is in kilos, 180 pounds. I look like I was when I was 23 years old and I have a full set of hair. When I look in the mirror, I can either project that false image or I can look at the truth. But here's the thing. If I see the truth and I look at myself and I'm like, I'm too ugly. Well, look, I don't have that full set of hair. I'm, I, I don't weigh 180, I weigh 200 pounds. And I'm 37 years old, not 23. The three judgments I just did are based on my agreement of what the perfect me should be. I create this false image of myself and I compare myself to that image, an image that was shaped by my own agreements and the reflection of everyone around me. And I'm the one who believed it, regardless of whether whatever anyone else says or whatever anyone else thinks or what's published in a newspaper or magazines or an MTV or whatever. I'm the one who said yes. So when I judge myself, all I'm hearing, all those self judgments are my own agreement. They have power because I give it power. And why? Well, every single self judgment is the form, you could say, like a, like a lasso or like a whip to punish myself for not living up to this expectation. And it's supposed to spur me on to do something, to motivate me to do something. Because domestication can cut in two ways. One, self judgment can actually be so painful that I don't want to live life and I'll be in my shelter and I won't do anything. And I'll be so petrified to do anything because I'm so afraid. Or I don't want to ever feel that pain again. I'm going to do this so I'll never feel that judgment again. This is the reason why we use domestication, or at least why parents use it, because when we motivate our kids with this system, they can either sink or they can do good because they don't want to feel that pain or that pressure ever again. The, the thing about it is that once you reach that image, some people cre reach that level of beauty. Now they can, the hardest part is staying there. And if they stay there, if, if they fall off that image, if they also start aging, you know, start, also, they, they no, have, no longer have the power of staying in that image of what beauty should be, then they start judging themselves. How could I have done this? I was perfect. I was perfect. The more, even if you succeed, eventually we can't keep it up forever. And that's, you can say, a condition, a part of our domestication. You can say with the four conditions for the four agreements, I can shape myself to be all four. And as long as I live up to this, the four, four agreements or the four conditions, that I am worthy to call myself Don Miguel Ruiz. And if I don't, if I take things personal, or I don't do my best, or I make an assumption, <gasps> the judgment is there in the same aspect, in the same element. So in changing that is one, to understand that we're doing it, becoming aware that this is the model we've become aware of, that those judgments, those beliefs that I use to castigate myself, to, to basically beat myself up with, they only have power because I give them power. Yeah. The thing is, if I accept myself for who I am, to love myself unconditionally first comes with this one. My life is worth something. Unconditional love is to love this energy that is me. Because if I love myself based on a definition like Toltec or American or Mexican or man or whatever, then I'm loving myself conditionally for as long as I live up to that definition, to that identity. Unconditional love is loving this energy that moves this body and everything else will be a ramification of that love. So for example, I become aware that I've been using 
taking things personally for a long, long time. So I've taken things personal. I've punished myself with judgment. All right, I don't want to do it. I read this book. I, I saw this agreement. All right, very first step, like anything, I accept the truth, like going to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, or any form of drug addiction. I accept the truth. I do this. I have taken things personal. I have judged myself. This is the truth. I have done it. And I accept myself that this is me. Now I have a choice. Do I want to continue or do I want to let go? And that's really the principle right there. If I want to let go, it already comes from a definition of I've already accepted myself for who I am. So changing here is just simply how I want to use my intent to manifest something in life. I no longer want to use my energy to taking things personal. So, okay, we found out that, all right, I don't want to take things personal. The best thing to do is what triggers me? What triggers me to take things personal? What triggers me to make that judgment? What triggers me to do that? And you have to see myself for who I am and look at myself. Well, if I turn on the social media site or Facebook and I look at it, that guy's post always makes me go, Grrr, and I know it's happening. Okay. I've become aware of what triggers me. What are my triggers to take things personal? I practice and then I log on to Facebook or the social media sites. I scroll down and there, there his name. If I scroll, I can see and there it is. The moment of truth. At that moment of truth, I have a choice. I've already accept myself, so I, if I want to take it personal, I will take it personal. If I don't want to take it personal, then I won't. This is where the agreement comes in. This is when the agreement comes to life. I totally agree with you. I had a circumstance where I, I, there is this person that really, as you say, I take things personally when, when she's around. And uh, her her attitude gets to me, and it was funny because uh, I, I of course I, I have the choice to confront, not confront. I have the choice to even be in the environment of that being or not, but I choose to be next to that person voluntarily. And it was so funny because it lately I, maybe by practicing more and more and more, I come to almost be almost like myself watching myself act and uh, almost as an act as a real act where i i am watching myself do and say okay am i gonna act angry because it is in it will provoke a certain reaction from that person or not and and it's interesting when we finally are able to like almost um be separate from us to be able to uh, decide upon what our intention is, what our action is. But I, I, it, it's a work in process. I believe that it, 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 everybody can learn and decide, but it, I believe also it's, it is a work in process. It doesn't happen instantly. So and, that, and that's really it. The whole work in process is, is key. Because with practice makes the master. Yeah. You see, what you're describing there is the, the ability to become aware of how to choose. And to me, that's really the power there because are we in control of our intent or, or what our beliefs controlling us? Or you can say, do I control knowledge or does knowledge control me? When I have the freedom to choose, I'm aware that I'm the one in charge of how I'm going to use my intent. If, the, if I'm going to take a personal from that person, or from this comment, I have control of doing that. If I don't have control, then my beliefs are controlling my actions. Like, it's basically my beliefs are controlling this marionette that is me. And who is controlling? Me, life, or my beliefs? And that's the thing. Becoming aware of one of, how you describe it, the trigger, being around this one lady, or with me with a Facebook, then we have that choice. That choice is power. Because in that moment, we choose how we want to use our intent to manifest or not, to become aware. Exactly. 
And and uncon the root of that unconditional love is saying, I love myself so much that I take full responsibility for my actions. And this particular four, agree the four agreements come alive in that moment because they're not something theoretical, but it becomes something practical in that moment of choice. And that's how the four agreements comes in, not just the four agreements, but the work of Deepak Chopra, the Bible, the Quran, Krishna, Buddha. It's in that moment of choice, we have this plethora of information that we can use as instruments. And the reason why that is important is because we take action based on what we perceive. And if we are attuned with the reality we are in at this very moment, like, for example, you're telling, you're saying about this one person who you, t you take things personal and you sit next to her and you have that moment of choice. You can choose to let her intent affect you or you can choose to control your own intent. You can either A, take it personal and make this or you understand, all right, that's how she works. I'm not going to let that energy affect me. And that's staying in my center. That's staying in that center. And so, so going back to your first question about how do I address that with someone who doesn't love themselves? Well, ask yourself this question. Do you love, do you, do you not love yourself because all the beliefs that people around you control your actions or do you not love yourself because you're not, you're not enjoying being who you are? And who, am, who are we? We are life. We are the manifestation of life. From the moment we are born to the moment we die, the whole trajectory, we are with ourselves. My life, your life is worth something. It's worth more than a belief. It's worth worth than anything. Because it, this life that we have, it's a wonderful opportunity to enjoy not only the manifestation all around us, but get to enjoy the time with people we love. Especially the concept which is me, which is you. I often tell the people uh, that, you know, in the matter of loving oneself, because I find in my line of work, I meet a lot of people where the root, I see the root of the issue is a lack of self-esteem, where they find that they don't, they lack that love. And in the everyday actions, just like you said, from the morning, from the beginning of the day, when they look at themselves in the mirror, they're not even acknowledging their own presence as they would do in a fr for a friend on the street, where they would say hi, or they would give a nice compliment, or they would a nice gesture, a nice anything. And I, when I teach people, I say, at least in your, even if you're not able to change the belief at first, do in your action, as you would do for your best friend, to start with. You know, you, you won't criticize. Say, if you criticize your friend every time you see him, you're fat, you're, you're, you don't look nice, you're this, you're that, look, you're stupid, you won't be your friend for very, very long. No. And as you say, we are with us, with that being that the life that's running through this body until I am here in this body, that is who we are with the <laughs> most amount of time. So at least to enjoy that time. So I, I agree with you in that, in that importance of giving attention to an acceptance to that, that living, that being that is within us. I, there's a lot of people that maybe ache and one of the achings I find is that they, they do not know what their purpose in this life is. They're, they find themselves lost in this life, kind of, being in a body that moves around the earth but without having a passion that drives them or purpose or knowing what they really want mm -hmm. and how what advice would you give these these people well it depends on what how how we see the world that's going to be 
how our passions thrive. Passion is enjoying something we love to do, doing something we love to do, be it with dance, with be it work, with, with anything. Finding a passion in life starts, one, of accepting who we are, that we're alive, that just as much I'm able to move this body, I can use this energy to manifest something, and I can choose whatever it is. There are 7 billion people living in this planet today. Each one is unique as they are, which means there are 7 billion ways minimum of, of living life. Each one of us has the opportunity, one, to create the life we want because we are alive. And while we are alive, anything is possible. All that matters is to take a step. You can say that having faith in oneself is being able to have that faith to be able to take that single step, that action, that initial action to take a step towards a dream, towards something. And then the intent to continue to take steps in that direction. So the question is, sometimes... We don't have that passion because we're so stuck in what others want us to do. Sometimes we're stuck with our domestication, our conditional love telling us, well, the only way we can accept ourselves is if we make this, if we make this much money, if we make this concept, if we are able to do whatever it is that our imagination is supposed to do. Be a lawyer, be a doctor, be, be a rich man, be a rich woman, be this... If we think about it that way, then we've limited this great potential to this little one. And the worst thing about it is that we limit ourselves not because of our own agreement, but because of someone else's point of view, someone else's agreement. So the very first thing then is to regain the faith in ourselves to take that step. That because we're taking a step, because we're able to move, because we're able to make a choice, it comes from that. I'm able to respect my own choice, that my word matters to me at least. Because it doesn't matter if anyone else values my word or not. It only matters to me because it's important to me. When I have that reconnection, once again, to have faith in my own choices, in my own word, in my own intent, to trust my own intent, to not be afraid of failure, to not be afraid of mistakes. Why are we afraid of mistakes? Because in our domestication, it was taught that if we make them, then we're not worthy, we're not good enough. Well... Millionaires make money because from their mistakes, they learn what not to do, not because of some belief, but because life said, okay, this doesn't work. All right, life, show me another way, another, another, another. The path of least resistance is the path that always say yes. The dream of the planet is constructed of yes and no, like in the Matrix. When the movie The Matrix came out, they came to my dad, Don Miguel, I understand what the dream of the planet is. Is this matrix? <laughs> yes, it's, it is similar to that. But here's the thing. The, ma the matrix is a binary code of ones and zeros. Well, the dream of the planet is also a binary code. Yes and no. An example. If we go outside the building you're in right now, what you will see are the buildings that this community said yes to. What you don't see are the buildings that this community said no to. Because somewhere along the line, someone said no. And when they know that, they're not going to use that energy to manifest it. So those buildings do not exist. So in the dream of us, in the dream of life, the path of least resistance is that path where the whole dream says yes to one another. 
So if we can understand that with a dream planet in our own mind, every belief we have that yes, there's only in our mind that says yes, that what's not in our mind is the things we said no. So an understanding, that ability to have faith in our own yes and our own no, which is the manifestation of our intent, then that makes us a co-creator with life. We can go out to the world and respect their no, just as much as we respect our own. I respect my no. My no is just as powerful as my yes. I don't need to say with anger. I can just simply say with no. But sometimes we think with anger, our no is more powerful, but it's not. It's just simply a crutch. We don't believe in our no that strong, so we need to say with anger. But our no, just simply by saying it simple, it's the expression of my complete faith in my own no. When I have that respect, then I can respect it to you. Respecting your no. When I respect your no, it means I respect your own intent, your own way of life. Because when we both say yes between us, we will be able to manifest it because we both say yes together. And that is creating with harmony as opposed to imposing and subjugation. Exactly. When we build with that, then how we engage the world, how we're able to manifest makes us that co-creator because yes life will sometimes provide us with an opportunity with that path of least resistance that will allow ourselves to manifest and sometimes it'll say no to us this is where passion comes in to the to answer to your question passion is simply the way i express this intent because if love, if conditional love is the motivator to make me do something, then obsession is the thing that drives me to make something. Then passion is the opposite of obsession. Passion is the thing that allows me to do something whether or not I get paid for it, whether or not it's financially motivating. Because when I love doing what I love to do, success is the natural consequence of that passion. Sometimes it does bring financial uh, success, but that's just a consequence, a side project. Sometimes it doesn't, but you love doing it because for those five minutes that you were playing the drum, you were alive. And you play the drum, or you're dancing, or you're painting, or you're writing, or you're working, you're alive. That's what passion is. Doing something that makes me feel alive for doing it. And I have the complete confidence in myself that I can do it. But of course, there's a question, well, we need to survive, we need to live in the world. Well, yes. Sometimes we need to take, we take jobs that is not in the shape of our passion, but if we look at it as an instrument, all right, this job allows me to do this job, then great. If this job is feeding me, and then this thing is allowing me to become alive, there you go. I, I noticed also uh, recently, actually this year, um, something that I was doing mistakenly in my own life is that I found you, you're talking about the path of least resistance and saying yes, and sometimes it, it because, I, actually the reality is, my reality was that I believed that I had to fight in order to be worthy of the path I chose. Mm -hmm. And it's just a recently where I, I uh, consciously decided that I wanted my life to be easy and mm -hmm. no longer fight to deserve, but actually to co-create with simplicity and ease. And I find, well, now that when I realize that, when I look around me, a lot of people, I find, 
believe they need to, to fight in order to deserve or to work hard or it has to be difficult um, for them to achieve and that it, it kind of the worthiness of success is linked to how much you needed to, you know, how, how complicated it needed to be when actually life, it is the path of least resistance. It mm -hmm. is the path of flowing. It is the path of simplicity and, and actually fighting is actually fighting life. Would you agree or what is your thought? Well, it depends, depends on how, on how we use the, use the word fighting. fighting. Uh, with, with life, if you look at life, we only struggle when life is trying to tell us no and we want to force our way through. Then we have this conflict, this imposing. Imposing in subjugation, you can say, when I, when I impose my belief onto something or something, I want life to be and I do my very best to impose it. When the thing is that every person in the world, including life, has freedom of choice, freedom of freedom to say yes or no. Life says yes and no, regardless. It does it. Humans has this belief and idea that of our free will, and we are, all seven billion people are doing and living our own life. When we're trying to create something and it is based on someone else's will, then this is where imposing a subjugation come in, especially with conditional love. If I want you to do what I want you to do, then I'm going to impose my will onto you. But that has to come with permission, your permission. I cannot impose anything onto you without your permission. So the thing to do is to make you doubt your own intent, make you doubt your yes and no, make you doubt your own confidence, make you not to believe in yourself. That's the easy way to impose. The subjugation is, I don't believe in my own yes and no, can you please make the choices for me? And imposing says, fine, I will. The, every parasite will find its host. So in the world of Dream the Planet, this is supposed to be harmony because this is the reason why we domest people domesticate one another. We domesticate on one another to make them do what we want them to do. Whenever we judge someone else, we're punishing them for agreements they never made. So we make them, we force them to make the same agreements we make by punishing them and then we make them do their, to make an agreement with us through that punishment by accepting that judgment. Yes, you're fat. Yes, you're not worthy. Oh, you're not classy enough. Oh, and all those, all those judgments that are negative, that are made you to put you down. So this is imposing a subjugation. Then we have the power of the wills. When we clash, who is going to win? Who is going to construct? Aha! This is where I understand us fighting. I have to impose my will onto you. And this is the war we see in the dream of the planet. Aha! They even made a song about it. Under my thumb, the girl who once had me down. Under my thumb, she's the sweetest. Pet in the world. That's some, that's a, the song of someone doing this. I won. So and then there's people who are in a relationship with each other and they're both subjugated and they're both no you leave, no you leave, no no you leave. And nothing happens. Nothing nothing happens. Because both of them don't trust each other. It's like if we if we see it like a dance, this is like a tango. I impose my will to you and you better do it and, and that's it. When you have that, it's like, no, I lead, no, you lead, no, I lead, no, I lead. And you have the struggles, who's going to... And then this one is like being in a, in, in a school dance where two kids are going... <laughs> yeah, exactly. The other one is engaging. The other form of relationship is engaging where I trust my own intent. I trust my own yes. I trust my own no. With that respect for myself, 
I'm able to give that respect to you. I respect your yes and I respect your no. Like for example, right now you and I are in relationship because we both said yes to being on this interview together. If one of us said no, then this relationship does not exist. Boom. If you said, can you be in this interview? And I said no, and you want to force me to do the interview, then that's imposing like that. But we both said yes, and we both said no to certain things, and then we both said yes, and boom. Having that mutual respect, that I respect you, and you respect me, we're able to create the dream of, of us together. Like that image of going outside the house and looking at the other buildings. The only buildings that we see are the buildings this community said yes to. Well, the only thing that's gonna happen between you and I are the agreements you and I say no, yes to. The things you and I both say no to, that doesn't exist in our relationship. That's what makes us co-creators. That's what makes us find that path of least resistance. Because you see, there's a way that I can force my way into that path of least resistance and I have to dominate someone. Or I can respect you and you willingly say yes to me, but not because I, you have to, but because we want to and we create harmony. Because at any moment, both of us can change our minds and say no, and I can hit the end button of this and this interview is over. But I'm saying yes to it, so I'm not going to push that button until we finish, until both of us says, we're good, we're good, all right. And that's the beautiful thing. So, so finding that comes from one simple step, having faith in myself. From that little seed of my life is worth something and respecting my own intent, from that blossoming inside of me, I'm able to share it because I cannot give what I don't have. Okay. If I'm used to this, then I will be doing that for the rest of my life. Then if I'm like this, willing to engage in those people who are trying to impose me, my no is just as powerful. Or oh, there's people who are subjugated and they want me to no, no, impose, impose. No, I'm not gonna do it. And my no is just as powerful. But when someone says yes and we're doing a dance, then that dance Yes, I might be leading, but I'm leading with your permission, and we both know what we're doing, and we're both in sync with one another. Yes, and that is such a, a learning process. I wish a lot of people uh, understand or agree to, to better them, their lives. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. You can almost right there in that sentence, you can see as soon as we get this aha moment, we want to share it with everyone else no. and we're doing this again I this know. is this is the four conditions this oh, is how the no. four conditions happen going back to square one of this interview this is how the four agreements can turn to the four conditions this is the answer to what was it like growing up with my family well i became aware of that yeah. and slow even though i was they were teaching me this i only saw this until life came, I saw, I saw understanding. Now I saw it like that. After all these years, I finally understand my family's concept. When we teach, we plant seeds. And the reason why we use this image is this way. Seeds blossom in the fertile mind. Meaning by that, a mind that is ready. I could teach to you by imposing my will onto you that this is the only way. It's not going to work. Why? Because I'm already not respecting your own intent. You see, I say my words and I'm, my words are powerful because they're powerful to me. But the power ends at the tips of my fingers. When I say them, my words, and you hear it in your mind, in your ear, in your mind, you have a choice. Miguel, I agree with you. Miguel, I don't agree with you. That is your power. That is what I will celebrate. We will not take away anyone else's free will. In fact, the seeds we're planting is for you to become aware of it. So when you go out and live life, 
And you go this, oh, I understand it. Oh, aha, like the four agreements and the four conditions and all that kind of thing. I finally understood it. It's when my family planted seeds and then they had to step a step back, detach because they can only do so much. They, yes, they can go in there and impose their will, like my dad paying me to go to his classes and then stop paying me because now he became aware of respecting my own intent that these lessons will flourish in me when I'm ready. And that's even within my own, the own family. Imagine outside. So we plant seeds with love, with intent. And those seeds in those moments of choices when a person has a choice and they remember that choice, like not taking things personal when we're looking through Facebook and all of a sudden, aha, there it is, or sitting next to a person. In that moment of choice, that lesson becomes blossoms. It sprouts. And it sprouts by us taking an action, a choice. I say yes to it. And that's the beautiful thing. I'm only responsible for my own intent. I am not responsible for anyone else's. But I, because I respect their intent, I can easily become a tyrant. But the world already has a lot of those. But here's my lessons, here's my teachings. And if you like it, great, grab them and, and use them as instruments in your own life, in your own transformation. And you make, your, make them your own. And how do you make them your own? By shaping them to fit your own life how they become relevant in your own life that's compassion compassion and respect i agree and i i want to thank you miguel i i with my intent is to meet you in person in the short in in a short while and uh, my intent is for a lot of people to to see, um, to have, to, to just be in love, in love with life, which is so wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to really, really thank you for, for sharing your thoughts, for accepting uh, to, to spend time with me. And hopefully we do it again. Yes! And and it is such a pleasure. It really, uh, really, really is. And thank, thank you, Sonica. Thank, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to talk to you. Thank you, Miguel. And, and uh, I will um, post also where people can find you, get more info, get in touch, and follow you, and have lots of info because... I <laughs> Hello! <laughs> find you in every aspect of what you're doing. I want to really thank you. It, it touched me so dearly that you agreed to this. And uh, hopefully we mm -hmm. do it again. Uh, hopefully yes. people will ask uh, me questions that I can forward to you. And uh, we can have uh, lots of fun more and more. And, uh, and hopefully we meet. Hopefully we meet and we co-create other beautiful things. In the oh, my pleasure. Look, this is my little girl. Hello. Say hello. Hi. Hi. I am so happy to meet you. What is your name? Audrey. Audrey. That's a beautiful name. My name is Slavika. Hi, Slavika. Good job. Hi. Good for nothing, man. That's very rare people get it on the first try. So I yeah. know, she got it, Grandma. Wow, that's impressive. Honey. Yeah, yeah, mm. you're very good. So. Oh, she's showing me her little presents she got. Uh, 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 I have no, no calories. You got no calories? Wow. Yeah, good. Yeah. She just came back from the dentist. That's very I wasn't good. swimming at all. Oh, honey, you did good, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, well, good, good. You see the results. You wash, you brush, you brush your teeth, and that's a, and the consequence is healthy teeth. I did it. I did. I did what they said. Ah, intent. There you go. She grabbed. She, she someone said something, and she grabbed it, and she started doing it, and that's, very that's the consequence. That's, that's the, the way. That's the way. That's the way. The flower head 
Oh, the fluoride for this wheel? Yeah, well, we don't have to take too much fluoride now. <laughs> but it's only, it's only once in a while. It's not very often, so you won't no. have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love you very much. Bye. 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 Audrey. Bye. Audrey. She's cool. so cute. You know the cool thing about that is like what she said. Like I did what they told me. She didn't have to, but she followed and in time was done as an instrument, and there's a consequence. One of the things I yeah, with my kids, we teach them about action reaction, which is for every action there's a consequence. So. You know, you know, with my son, he, he has four cavities, and we still love him. We're like, all right, you see, that's the consequence. And I'll be like, oh, I see. Life, life teaches that way. Yes. Life teaches in the way of action-reaction, which is you take an action, and sometimes there's a consequence that's positive or negative. Our domesticated mind says, well, positive means good, and negative means bad, and I have to punish it. And we grab it, and we distort it with our own domestication, with our own conditioned love. But what happens if we love ourselves already that my kids don't have to fight for my love because I already accept them for who they are? Then now it's next. It's all right. I can take action. And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, all right, let's start another way. Find, find a way until, all right, this worked, boom. Exactly. And, and that's life. They are blessed and, and may you be blessed. Oh, well, thank you. With, with more love, more of everything that is enlightened. And, oh. uh, and I, I'm really touched and I, I, I'm really grateful for this moment. May they come numerous in the future. Thank you. And uh, may you find lots of uh, people. I, 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 I can't wait to actually see your book on meditation. That is, uh, I'm thrilled to, to go and read that. Yeah, it's, it's uh... It's, it's half a year meditation, which is a lot over 180, wow. and uh, it's basically the same way. Like uh, it's it's meant to be like a coffee table book or a small little book that uh, we're, we're going to be releasing in a few months, and it's the segue between with my next book, which right now the working title is Control Folly, and the concept is like all right. Uh, it's like if we use the image of uh, philosophy. The easiest part of enlightenment is reaching enlightenment. The hardest thing about enlightenment is staying in enlightenment. <laughs> For sure. Because we don't live in a monastery, we don't live in an ashram, we don't live isolated in the world. We live in the world. And for as long as we're in the world, we're constantly re-engaging. How to stay in our center. Of course, we're using uh, enlightenment. I can also use the word awareness or unconditional love. Or any other, or staying in shape, sure. you know, losing the weight. I lost all these kilos. Now the, the hardest part of losing kilo, the easiest part of losing kilos was losing the kilos. The hardest part is keeping those kilos off. Exactly. exactly. And that's the basis of my next book. Exactly. Basically, it's like, all right, you've got all this information. How do I apply it? I can't wait. I can't wait. And hopefully we, we talk again about it. And uh, let me know when your book is out, uh, uh, the next one. I will be uh, happy to read it and, and talk oh, thank about you. it. And okay. Thank you so much. And I hope you like the, the first book, which is the final of the time. Yes. Well, actually, I'm, and I stopped, to be truthful, I stopped reading because I was writing. And I always stop reading while I'm writing, just so I don't, I'm not influenced in my own inspiration, if you want. But now I'm I'm stopped writing, so I can read finally. <laughs> so, I can <laughs> so I'm gonna read your book and I'm gonna talk about it. I can't wait, actually. I cool. Wait. I hope you like it. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure I will. And I'll give you news. Actually, I'll write to you about it as well. All right, sounds good. Thank but, you so much. Thank well, you. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Have, Have fun. Enjoy. It. You too. You too. Enjoy this beautiful life. <laughs> Just so wonderful. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Have fun. Bye. 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 Bye.